Minecraft, a great program that pleases my thirst for creativity and patterns. I make annual videos on Minecraft, and last year's was about how hot the nether is. This year, we're tackling the busting force of Steve's psycho fist as he destroys materials such as wood, stone, and damn diamond! Hello, I'm the Theorizer, and using a few simple formulas of my own creation, we can easily figure out how much force Steve throws per punch when hitting each kind of block. This can further display to us something I've been saying for three years now, that Steve is immensely physically powerful. All we need to find said punching force is the time it takes him to destroy a certain block, the area of his fist, the rate at which he punches, and the ultimate tensile strength of the material he's slamming, basically how much pressure the material can take before collapsing. Warning, using the method I'm about to use is incredibly rough and rudimentary in the world of engineering, but it's the best thing I've got for now. It probably has a few flaws, but it will, in the very least, give us a baseline for how hard Steve can punch. So, I'll test a few materials. The most reliable materials for data are diamond and other blocks that are so difficult to punch and have a rocky base. So here's the formula, and right off the bat we know Steve's hand area. He's almost two meters tall, so comparing that to the size of a pixel and using the square area formula to find the surface area of his fist, we have that. Another easy one to find is the rate at which he punches. How many punches per second? It's easy. Watch him punch a bunch, time it, divide the number by time, boom! The answer is found there as well. The other two values are the variables, the things that change depending on the material he's attacking, the material's strength, and the time it takes him to destroy a block of it. Let's start off with something wickedly strong, diamond. Its real-life ultimate tensile strength varies greatly, but taking theoretical averages, it could get to an average high of about 125 billion pascals. It took me about 25.35 seconds to break a block of it, resulting in a force of 54 million newtons per punch? That's around 12 million pounds he's lashing out, more than enough to actually kill someone. I guess now we know how he can hold so many things in his inventory. Granite, on the other hand, has a strength of 16 million pascals and takes just 7.75 seconds to mine by hand. This makes his punching force when wrecking that around 22,640 newtons. He's picking and choosing how hard he punches each material, depending on how hard they are. Out of everything in the game, Diamond has the highest punching force, even more than Obsidian, because despite the fact that it takes 250 seconds to mine by hand, the actual strength of Obsidian is only around 2.3 billion pascals, far less than Diamond. This gives it a measly 101,000 newtons per punch. Interesting. Using this same formula, 135,000 newtons was the average for wood. His punching force is a thing that changes, though I've noticed he has a tendency to average in the high hundred thousands for his normal punches. Using the highest punching force I could find, which was for diamond, we can find out just how much that really is by comparing it to other kinds of real-life forces. The pressure itself would be around one gigapascal, or a billion pascals, which is around the same pressure found in high-power chemical reactors. Jeez. In Newtons, that force sits somewhere between the weight of a blue whale and the liftoff force of the Saturn V rocket. If Steve used that diamond punching force to hit another character vertically into the air using that same punching speed, they'd go flying at about 0.41 meters per second, which is surprisingly saying a lot since each character weighs around 1,000 pounds, as prior established by myself in that pitiful respawning video of mine. Oh, here's a good comparison. If he were to shoot a Minecraft bow at 45 degrees by pulling the string back with this force, holding it at about the same height of his head, then the arrow would manage to go a flabbergasting 520,000 kilometers per hour, 323,000 miles an hour, or a stunning 
Mach 424. This would keep it in the air for a whole 5 hours and 45 minutes. This would send it around 2 million kilometers away from you. If you shot it with a bow made of slime, yes I'm referencing my slime video here, then it would go at a much less 27,000 miles an hour Mach 37. It would have a mere 30 minutes of airtime, but would still travel a whopping 15.8 thousand kilometers away. So yeah, Minecraft has taught us at this point that the physics it contains are quite intriguingly exaggerated. I wonder what else can be found here. Sorry about this short but sweet video, it's just that so many more videos are being created at this time by myself, and this was a little one to tie you all over, instead of leaving this week blank. So yeah, I love these little physics videos, and apparently so do many of you. Until next time, I'm TT Theo the Riser without Kaiser Buns.